Welcome back. I'm Jennifer Richmond, and this is the Dwelling Richly Bible Study, where we love God, heart, soul, mind, and strength. We are women who enthusiastically and intentionally dwell in the Word and let the Word of Christ dwell in us richly. You can find Bible studies and video teaching like this on my blog and the Dwelling Richly podcast. Subscribe to this channel, hit that little church bell so you can get notified whenever I drop a new video. Let's get into the Word. All right, let's do exactly that and get into God's Word here together today. Welcome back. And today we're in lesson 14. This is day six, and we're going to be covering Romans chapter 15, verses 30 through 33. 30 through 33. So thank you for being here with me today. If this is your very first time or you're an old hat at doing these Bible studies with me together, um, you can tell that we are at the end of the book of Romans and the end of, or coming to the end of our study through that. And I just loved engaging with you in that and look forward to already just more opportunities we'll have over the summer in our new summer study called Reflections Through Romans coming up. And then our fall study, which will begin in September, and that one will be through Genesis. So we're going to go through Genesis from September um, through May or April of 2022. So lots of great stuff in store. Uh, so for right now, say hi. Let me know you're here. Drop a comment and hit that like button. <laughs> and uh, it's just an easy and uh, well simple way for you to help support this ministry and to grow together with me. So thank you for doing that. All right, let's go ahead and get into the word together with some prayer and uh, then we'll jump into our lesson. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for just everything that brings us here to this moment. Thank you for those listening and just our time that we have together now in the word. I pray that our eyes would be open to your truth and that you would be edify a blessed and glorified as we're edified in the word today thank you for that in jesus name amen all right let's go ahead and i'm going to share the screen with you again and uh see how uh see if we can engage together as always you can get the uh, you can get these uh lessons all right yeah hold on all right, so as always, you can get these lessons on my website, jennifergrichmond.com. Just go over to the Dwelling Richly tab, and you'll see everything related to uh, ministry and Bible studies will be listed there as well. This is Romans Well and Redeemed. You know the drill. <laughs> but just in case you're new and just figuring this out, that's where you find the stuff. If you have any questions, leave a comment or just email me. And I'm fairly uh, simple to get back to <laughs> on all that. So I look forward to hearing from you guys if you have any questions at all. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this lesson, um, beginning with kind of a think back to make sure we know what we've been talking about. And oh, wait, I just kind of jumped ahead, didn't I? We need to read the word. <laughs> I got to go and all right, let's go ahead and switch screen so I can do that. All right, our memory verse uh, together with me. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you believe in him so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And our passage today, Romans 15, 30 to 33. Now I urge you, brothers and sisters, through our Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit to join fervently with me in prayer to God on my behalf. Pray that I may be rescued from those who are disobedient in Judea and that my ministry in Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. Now may the God of peace be with all of you. Amen. All right. Now back over here to our uh, questions to get us going to, to begin with today. All right. Thinking back, where is Paul heading in chapter 15, verse 29? He talked about that. And then, you know, the but first moment that he's going to go through. Well, um, he's heading to Rome. But first, he wants to swing by Jerusalem. He's already had some challenges there, and he's going right back at it. He just loves Jerusalem, as all of us, I believe, I think all of us as believers have a love for Jerusalem, um, and a nostalgia, in a sense, and a hope as well, and Paul does this as well. And so Rome is where he's heading, but first he is heading off to Jerusalem. All right, so we're going to take some time right now in these opening questions to do some personal evaluation and reflecting. And if you're like me and you read passages in the Bible that have to do with prayer, I know for me that is prayer has been a constant um, growth challenge for me. There's some things in my Christian walk 
that I feel like just come really naturally. And talking to God does, engaging with God in creation through worship, just feeling like I'm connected to God is that comes pretty naturally to me in terms of my my faith and how I practice my faith, right? Prayer comes naturally in the sense of just talking to God, like even in the sense of right now, as I'm teaching this Bible study, I have a sense of communion with God going on at the same time. But prayer for me in terms of a regular disciplined approach, that's been a little bit different. So we're going to think about prayer in today's lesson and do some inventory personally on that. And I look forward to hearing from you what, um, what prayer has looked like and is looking like in your life as well and see if today we can grow a little deeper in our prayer life. I know um, that's a lifelong goal for me every day to continue to grow in my faith and prayer is an aspect of that. And so I want us all to grow together in that to get also grow together in that as well. All right. So what motivates you in your prayer life? Well, for me, I'm motivated by current needs, physical needs, emotional, um, personal health, wellness, all that stuff. Um, a comfort, needing comfort, um, or just the desire and, and the warmth I feel from prayer and, and finding comfort in that act. Um, it motivates me to pray when I'm lacking wisdom and I know that God is the all wise God. And so praying to him helps me think biblically, helps me think about what I already know to be true and helps me to connect with the wisdom of God. And um, also in terms of a motivation for me, believing that God, knowing that God and believing that God hears and responds. I know that. I believe that. All right. Well, so what discourages me, to be honest, is kind of the same. Those very things that I find great hope and encouragement in are sometimes the things that I find I struggle, like cycles and seasons of my life when I have felt like, does God really exist? Is, am I all making this up? You know, you know, doubt, moments of doubt, patterns of, of um, doubt in my life, seasons like that. So that has discouraged me from prayer. Like, is this even working kind of thing, right? Um, who, if anyone, has been a prayer role model or an inspiration for you? Well, for me, honestly, Jesus. And I, when I went to write that, I'm like, that's going to sound kind of like Jesus is the answer. But truly, when I wanted to learn how to become stronger in my prayer life, I thought, well, how did Jesus pray? Like, what did he talk about? What did he go to God about? Because it goes back to the whole, what, what would Jesus do thing? How would Jesus pray? And so I think about that. And then... Um, Daniel, I love the prayer life of Daniel from the Old Testament and his courage and his strength. And then um, in contemporary, non-biblical or extra-biblical um, prayer, there's a lot. I thought immediately of Christian women and in particular, um, Anne Graham Lotz, an inspirational woman who wrote a book, called, I believe it's called The Daniel Prayer, that I uh, went through, read that book and loved it. And then the Corrie ten Boom and her sister, I forgot her sister's name, Betty. Etsy. Yeah. Um, and just the example they had in terms of what they went through in uh, World War II in German Nazi imprisonment camps. Very inspirational. All right. Number three, Trinity, no Trinity, Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Church of God, sect, uh, portions of the Church of God, um, Islam, Judaism, among others, deny that the Bible teaches the doctrine of the Trinity. If you were to defend this doctrine, how would today's passage help you show someone um, what the Bible says? All right. So for starters, and we'll talk about this. I think I'll get into this in my message. I haven't finished writing that talk yet, but I think when I talk, talk a little bit about this. Uh, for starters, the word Trinity is not in the Bible. So that's why a lot of these religious groups say, oh, you know, there's no, it doesn't talk about it in the Bible. It doesn't say the word Trinity. And so uh, what we have to remember is just because it doesn't say the word Trinity in the Bible doesn't mean the truth of the Trinity isn't uh, there for us. So in the passage that we read today, Paul speaks of all three, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. And maybe as you were reading, you noticed that, but he appeals to the Lord Jesus Christ and only God should get the title Lord. Um, and he says, he speaks of the love of the spirit. That's all in capital. That's the spirit, like the Holy Spirit, that love. 
And then he's praying to God as well as acknowledging God's will, as well as the closing prayer to God of all peace. I mean, that, that all that together um, tells us that Paul has an idea of the Trinity. Well, maybe we will talk about this in the upcoming lesson. Um, we'll, we'll do a little bit about when the doctrine of the Trinity tightened up and became a thing. So don't let me forget that. I, I usually start working out my message later on uh, toward the, the day we actually meet. So hopefully I'll remember <laughs> we're going to talk about the Trinity in that message. Anyway, uh, so that's where it goes. If I was to defend, I, I would use this passage among others um, to help me to defend that. But I'd be curious about you. Do you see the Trinity here? Is this something that you'd be comfortable in in terms of defending uh, your faith and the doctrinal tenets of our faith? That being that God is three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Maybe we should talk about that, what, how important that is. All right, let's take a look at number four. If you have your lesson out there, you'll see it. I can actually even share the screen so you can see it here as well. What is Paul urging his brothers and sisters to do on his behalf? Well, he's urging them to strive together with him. And if you look, let's go ahead and look at this verse. Um, he said, um, mum, 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 mum. I urge you to love of the Holy Spirit to join fervently with me in prayer or strive together with me in prayer. I think strive was the way that ESV um, translates it. All right. I know number five. I know, but I gotta go. <laughs> Paul says this, right? Because why? Because he knows what he's going to face when he goes back to Jerusalem. What does Paul know he will face as he goes to Jerusalem? And why does he know it for certain? Well, we see this in Acts 20, uh, verse 3 and 23, and then in Acts uh, 21, 4 to 21. Now, we talked a lot about this yesterday, so we're not going not gonna to go too much into this. But Acts 20, verse 3, where he stayed for three months because the Jews had made a plot against him and he was intending to sail for Syria. So that was part of Paul's story. Verse 23, the Holy Spirit warns me in town after town that imprisonment and persecution are awaiting me. He gets more into the Holy Spirit. And then, of course, this passage here in Acts 21, where he actually gets a prophetic warning from the prophet Agabus, who says, if you go, you're going to get bound up and beaten. And Paul's like, yeah, but I got to go. I got to go anyway. <laughs> I love that. Powerful Paul. All right. So this next section here, I was fascinated by the prayers of Paul and the concept and the theme of praying, because this is a prayer that he prays right here in Romans. And so I wanted us to look at some other examples of prayer and Paul's prayer life as he recorded them. And we have, isn't that great that we have these uh, prayers. So you can see in your lesson, the, the prayers of Paul um, recorded in um, uh, First Thessalonians and Second Thessalonians, which is exciting because as a church, we're after beginning a new study through both of these uh, epistles in Philippians 1, Ephesians 6, 2 Corinthians 1, and Colossians 4. So I have those here on the screen for us. We can take a look at each of them. And then uh, I've got a couple of notes on one of them that I'm going to share with you as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this first one here <laughs> because it's very short. Uh, first Thessalonians 5, brothers and sisters, pray for us too. And then in 2 Thessalonians 3, which is the final chapter, by the way, of 2 Thessalonians, very short book. Finally, brothers, pray for us. Uh, finally, pray for us, brothers and sisters, that the Lord's message may spread quickly and be honored as, in fact, it, it was among you, and that we may be delivered from perverse and evil people, or not all have faith. Philippians 1, for I know this will turn out for my deliverance through your prayers and that the help of the, Holy, of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. My confident hope is that I will in no way be ashamed, but that with complete boldness, even now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether I live or I die. Indeed, in 2 Corinthians, indeed, we felt as if the sentence of death had been passed against us so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. He delivered us from so great a risk of death that he will deliver us. Um, we have set our hope on him that he will deliver us again, as you also join in helping us by prayer, so that many people may give thanks to God on our behalf for the gracious gift. And then in Colossians, uh, at the same time, pray for us too that God may open a door for the message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, which I am ashamed to pray that I make it known as I 
should. All right, so we see Paul's urging for prayer and how that urging and that is an example uh, for me and my life and maybe, and you can think about this in terms of how it relates to you in your life as well. Um, but let's go ahead and take a look at just these first two. You can pick any ones that you would like. The common thread that I see in all of these is Paul's, um, well, what he prays or asks or prayer for. Um, he's asked basically in First Thessalonians flat out, just pray for us. And in Second Thessalonians, that the Lord's message may be spread, honored, and that they will be delivered from these perverse people. What do I see as an example in all this? Well, each of the prayers shows that Paul expects that um, he knows that they're praying. He has an expectancy about that. He expects them to pray. Prayers are specific as well as general, and all of them remind us that Paul, uh, since I can trust him, I'm supposed to emulate him as, as, my, as my leader. And we're separated by, in time by 2,000 years, but by zero time in terms of God's way of thinking of it and the fact that I'm, I'm his sister in Christ, whether or not I lived at the same time as he did. And so his example to me would be as if he were a pastor for me in my life right now. And uh, with the exception of specific call outs that he gives to specific churches, Paul's general principles and modeling for me are true and they're true for you as well. So I see in Paul what I need to be expectant in prayer, demanding, asking, hoping, um, reaching out for prayer and with the expectation that God is going to answer uh, these prayers. So, okay. All right. So let's take a look at our next question here. Get that up on the screen. Why bother? So I, I find this to be honestly a question inspired by my own faith journey in terms of how I relate to scripture and what I think, oh, if this, then why that? All right. So here's, here's a question that I then thought of to ask you in this regard. So if Romans 8, 28 is true, all things work together for good those who love God and are called according to his purpose, then why bother praying? I mean, consider also uh, Ephesians 6, 12, um, and then 18 through 30. All right, let's take a look at those verses up here on the screen. I already recited back to you, essentially, Romans 8, 28, but let's take a look at 6, 12. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the powers, against the rulers, world rulers of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavens. With every prayer and petition, this is him, This is Paul talking now in verse 18 to 24. With every prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit, and to this end be alert with all perseverance and petitions for all the saints. Pray for me also that I may be given the right words when I begin to speak, that I may confidently make known the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may be able to speak boldly as I ought to speak. And then he speaks about Tychicus and his faithful servant, and uh, he says, I have sent him to you for this very purpose. You may know our circumstance and you encourage our hearts. Peace be with brothers and sisters and love with faith in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace with all those who love the Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. All right. So what's the deal? What's, ooh, look at all the light coming through on my, my blinds here in my room. <laughs> all right. So what's the deal about prayer? All right. So, yes, God does work all things together for good. Just because God works doesn't mean I don't. That would be quite fatalistic. Why would I do, why would I do anything in my life? I mean, if, God, if I know God works everything together for good, why not just quit my job, uh, rack up a credit card debt? God works everything together for good. So the same thing goes with prayer. Just because God works everything together for good doesn't mean I'm not, I don't work. It doesn't mean I don't get to participate in the grace and the sanctifying action of the Holy Spirit in my own life, uh, becoming holy. And also, obviously, we have a role model for contributing to the needs of the saints in, in spiritual as well as physical things. So we have the joy, we have the honor, we have the privilege, and we have the command of prayer in the Bible, and we have a role model. Uh, prayer is a significant weapon, and it is an actual weapon listed, as Paul closes out that epistle to Ephesians, it's, it's armor. It's, it's, it's part of our armor and how we engage in warfare because this is war. All right. So I'm curious your thoughts on that, what, how you said it. <laughs> As always, I'm curious about that. All right. And number eight, Paul, uh, our closing question here. I got you, Paul. <laughs> First century church in Rome. 
All right, so imagine that you're hearing Paul's letter read aloud. Write a prayer for Paul based on his request in Romans 15, 31 to 33. Hint, there are specific three requests that Paul makes in this passage. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Get the screen up here again for us. And he says, I urge you to love Jesus Christ. He says to join fervently with me in prayer. I was kind of fast. The love of Jesus Christ. To join fervently with me in prayer. Pray that I may be rescued from those who are disobedient. My ministry may be acceptable to the saints. God's will, I may come to you with joy and be refreshed in your company. All of this is part of the prayer, right? So at least three specific things, if not more, that he's um, addressing. So I'll give you the sample prayer that I wrote as I started thinking. If I was reading this letter, if I bent the knee and prayed on behalf of Paul that night, having read this, heard this letter in Rome, what would I pray? And this is what I would have prayed. And with that, we'll, we'll close our, uh, our time together. And so I'll just kind of close this out with this prayer and then uh, my final salutation as well. Heavenly Father, you can do all things, and I praise you for how you have blessed my life through Paul's ministry. Remember, I'm thinking like someone from Paul's day. Thank you for your faithful strength. I pray that you would rescue Paul from anyone who is evil and disobeying you in Judea. Specifically, as Paul goes to Jerusalem, I pray that he would be heard and received by the Christians in Jerusalem also. And Father, please bring Paul here to Rome quickly. I want to learn at his feet and hear from his voice. Protect and guide him and bring him here joyfully so we can bless and refresh him in our church. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. I would have loved to have been someone who could have prayed right there in live action for my brother in Christ, Paul. And I look forward to meeting you in person one day. And, uh, well, you know the drill at the end. I always love to sign off like this because it's true. And I really enjoy when you leave a comment because then I see your name. Uh, a like doesn't, I don't see anyone's name, so they like the video. But I can see if you comment. And so I thank you for that. And I pray for you by name every time. I, I see your comments, even if I don't get a chance to respond. I see them and I thank you. So know, as always, that you are loved and prayed for. And I look forward to being back here again with you real soon. Bye-bye for now.